easier standard Western region. Forty-two amp blocks. Nice and small. Got the main lock coil. You've got the actual picking arm, which engages in the slot there. That's how it comes off the tap it. Then you've got the LCC contact. So that's your coil, and that's your LCC contact there. They're very small on the top, aren't they? Yeah, these are the earlier ones because they've only got the one set of contacts. The later ones have got two. Yeah. So, I mean, at the moment, in with this heat, they're working fine. But as soon as you get to winter, not when our training season starts, this Cold box suffers some ones. really big bits of damage. I notice your you can't. There's no turnbuckle adjuster. Yeah. So it's it's just permanently fixing that one's one position all yeah. the time. Do you have many problems with that? Not really, I mean, it's... I mean, it's not too long a pull really on the, off the frame, is No, it? that's the thing, I mean, these things were all basically calibrated and designed to work as they do. And so we haven't actually, because, you know, it's only simulation, we haven't really bothered, but, I mean, I know on the main line, they have, you know, adapted them, but this is the, this is the traditional Western line of doing things. That's why my gloves on, yeah. wasn't it? Because it's been ages since this is what's been cleaned. So up here, this is one of the main beams supporting the frame and everything. You got the headstall base for the levers here. You got the sweeps up above me. This is one of the, the main cam boxes, which when you pull the lever moves this bar out. Yeah. Which basically propels this upwards or downwards depending on which way the lever's set. So it's turning the horizontal into the vertical. Vertical, yeah. Uh, you've got your main tap it here, and you've got all your interlocking below. And then a lot of, there's a hell of a lot of locks in West Box. Yes. Um, which is mainly all that really requires uh, maintenance, to be honest, in the locking room. I mean, we do lubricate the interlocking at least once every six months. Um, it should be done more, but that's how we do it. These wooden planks. Protects the uh, faux, the what do you call it? the passive infrared uh, sensors. Oh yes, which detects the rather than using magnetic switches, we just use those to detect the um, there's a white band on each of the tappets. Yes, uh, and obviously when the tappet moves, the white band moves out of position, and it can't detect That's anything way, there. It? So it's a simple way of doing. Yeah, it's not it's not the most uh, but it does the job for what you need to do with the simulator. Yeah, it does. And it's, it's not the most reliable. I um, mean, we do have a few problems, but you know, it has worked and does work quite well actually for what we need to do. There is quite a lot of conditional locking in this box, but it's not more than it needs to be. And it's actually quite remarkable how little conditional locking there is. Uh, you've got. One of the contact boxes there, and you've got a circuit control down there. As I say, I mean, this was installed here in about 1984, and we've had virtually no problems with it. I mean, the interlocking was installed a few years later, so for the first year, they actually worked the box with no locking. It was all ad lib. Who, obviously, the locking was pre done, but did you have the original plans to put it all back together exactly as was? Um, yes. Luckily. <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> who, who, who did you put it back together as a group or did you have any help from any locking fitters or? Uh, there were quite a number of, uh, there was two or three uh, locking fitters from Beta which were the members of the group at that time and the locking test was actually done by a, an actual uh, BR s and engineer, a locking uh, engineer. It's a heck of a lot of work isn't it? It's one of them frames you don't take anything off because it's all vertical. <laughs> yes. I mean, but as soon as you take one of these bridles out, the whole lot just falls forward. Falls <laughs> I mean, this Western stuff as well. I mean, it's, it's really nice and easy to maintain. And it's all visible, but, you know, you've, you've always got that issue. So we really don't touch the locking unless it's absolutely... So a lot of the flags of the river are completely faded in this box. And uh, see, this one has had some problems with it because it should. Should make contact and buzz. 
Well, it should be in that position, but I'm uh, guessing it's because it's been uh, magnetised yeah. at some point. Uh, so on the back here, you've got the actual contacts to ring the bell. There. Uh, not all of them are wired in. Uh, you've got the lightning arrestor there. That's and then, some protection there. Yeah, and then the front is, uh, the front is basically just the Spagnoletti indicator. indicator at the front. Again, if you look at the back, it's everything, I mean, it's just completely lost all of its the fading and light, yeah. Varnish and everything that's on it, it's absolutely gorgeous. The one good thing about it being Baker light, really, it survived a bit. You yeah. see it there, the lights, yeah. So, I mean, well, it's, it, everything west in my mind is beautifully ergonomical. I mean, it's not as ergonomical as the Midland frames, because they're fantastic in the REC frames, but I mean, all the instruments, I just love them because. You know, if you're going to set the cover off, you're going to have it in the on position, so, you know, that's handy. Uh, and I mean, this was made by, it's normally stamped at the top, but it's Walters that made them, made them or it's Thompson's. But, here we've got the mount behind the shelf. So this is Thompson Bell, all of ours have been stamped. You've got the bell tapper. You've got the earth connection and your, your main power connection and your line connection. This is Z, E, L and C. This coil is rung by the, the other signal box. When he presses his tapper down, that makes the, that energizes this coil, makes the circuit, which then sends the current from our battery via this coil and rings the bell. Now, X to S, we found these unreliable because of their age. Uh, and so we actually have standard relays around the back, which is something oh, underneath. Yeah. Yeah, underneath. You see them, yeah. And uh, that's how we've done it. Uh, basically, to get around that problem. And there's around six or uh, seven of those. Were all the Great Western um, instruments fitted with the lightning arrestor? They were eventually, not the early ones, uh, but very quickly they were, yeah. I mean, this is a standard, um, this is a standard one. And they're, they're all basically follow the exact same pattern. The only thing that does vary is the position of the screws. Uh, but it's, if you take one Western Bell off, they're all pretty much identical. Same. Okay. So this is a 1947 block. You've got the commentator. You can't turn it to the line clear position without pressing the plunger. And that's to stop the signalman from going straight from the train on line position straight through to line clear. He's actually got to press that down and peg. So that's how that works. Uh, you can see here you've got the contacts. This is the train on line side. This is the line clear side. So when I press the button in, turn it to line clear. You've got the contacts which come into alignment with the brass and the commutator. These ones at the back are generally for interlocking purposes, basically uh, interlocking levers, that kind of thing, all sorts of wacky releases and things like that. The front ones are mainly uh, to detect that the contact is normal. So that's those. You've got the standard Spagnoletti coils, and the good thing is about these is if you loosen the two screws at the back, you can just lift out these units and swap them around or replace them. So you don't need to faff about with, you know, coils there and then you just whip, whip the whole thing out. A lot easier to go into than a penguin block. So that's how that works. Well, normally, because we, we've got the sim on, you can't peg line clear until you've actually started the sim. Yeah. So that's, that's just something. And again, these all stay on the train online until you start the sim up and then they go down. And the con and the and the face actually locks on, but they generally require very little or no maintenance. You you can you lubricate these at the front, and he's recommended to do so. And at the back, if you're going to lubricate the front part, you and any of these instruments, you really want to be using clock oil. Yeah, because that doesn't degrade any of the electrics, and it doesn't damage the wood. So that's what we use, and I just use a really fine. Let's do that. Commutator in 
any position, clearing point fouled. I can't go back to line clear without depressing the plunger. You can block the commutator train online, and that's just to remind you that there's train that signal, or if you're blocking back, whatever. So it's, a, it's, it's a basically a pain boom, but it's a lot nicer, both for S&T and for the person using it. This is a simulator on the PC, on the laptop. So everything's shown there, so we've got all the lever positions, track diagram, all the blocks repeated, the controls and timetabling there as well. And this is mirrored across to the van outside as well, where there's uh, another half of the simulator as well that we'll have a look at. They've got the locking on the FPL, so you don't have to hold them down. Don't need to punch when you're pulling either. So without the FP, get that hold, please. Can't get the board off. I find pain to hold the up through. Get the board off. And that's just to give you a bit of fan protection. So Will was explaining there that normally you don't lock detonators, so you can pull them at any time in an emergency. However, because there's no traps there on the down main, those traps, is it 109s you said? Uh, 110. 110 is locked to the signals as well. So your next train on five is the five past nine from Clinton. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Whereas if I raised all signals, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. eighty-seven would then release. Sure, it's Sunday. Why are they calling yeah. us? That's meant to be on the down main.
perhaps some questions for them to communicate. So these communicate with the different signal boxes. So this one. And what we're doing, so we've just got the two, three, two, fours, three, fours, four. So that's there, that signal box, that is the middle. Thing is, this line is made for a light locomotive to shift to the shed. Yeah. Is, is there one moving? Or are you just like. Uh, no, it's, it's all demonstration. Like um, yeah. yeah. So, so and what, what Will's That's done there um, is he, he's uh, set up, he's moved all these points so that there is a clear route for the yeah. train to come in. So if it did happen to not stop, it would be a safe route. So, uh, um, so what he's done, he's, 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 he's tells the uh, moving signal. That's the, the, the loop is clear. Yeah. So repeated the code and moved his indicator to the line clear. Yeah. What that means is that we've told them that our line is clear. So they can then send the train to Walton. Yeah. This is the indicator which shows us whether the simulator switch is isolated or not. Uh, if the simulator switch shows uh, sim on, and we do start this thing up, uh, you will blow a fuse because you're trying to feed from two places at the same time. Um, today we're having issues with the block instruments and uh, not being able to show a line clear on a few of them in the West Box, but that's because there's some technical maintenance ongoing. Um, these are the block instruments. We've got City Basin block here. So this is the outside world from City Basin to X to West. This one is for the main lines. You've got the middle lines to main lines middle, uh, middle lines middle, uh, you've got the relief line and platform line middle, and you've got the extra central block bell unit and instruments. Then the little bell on the end is for the goods yard, they are switched down to the moment. Uh, this unit uh, is for the telltale lights. Uh, if you put it on seven seconds, it goes seven seconds and then it goes out automatically. 14 seconds to go. If you do it manually, you actually have to cancel it manually. Uh, at the back here, none of these are locked with the with the lock and rod. Uh, we've basically just wired in straight into the back of these. Uh, we are going to update this. Uh, we just lift the handset, uh, select which circuit we want to phone on, uh, and then we just press the button to uh, work the bell. Here we've got the section times for the trains. Uh, from the various boxes and then here we've got a diagram of middle to remind us where the clearing point is and the clearing point for middle is actually in the section it's beyond signal 85 uh, these are our reminder collars get this engine moving What I would have done personally is offered that phone as a shunting section because then you would just wouldn't have to cancel it but that's, that's my method of doing it. So, so that's that one, he's now going to go off to shed and the next train is the 820 engine off shed uh, to middle box with the 830 Dalton. There we go. And at X to West, all engines for the shed uh, have to go to the turntable first to be turned. And you've got this quiet bit, which, when, which you can actually uh, lose trains on if you're not careful, and engines. According to the instructions in the sectional appendix, we should whistle when we're clear of the, of the point 72, even though there is a track circuit. And you'll see it'll start putting the boards back 